Welcome to Hockey Wiz Talks Podcast. Today, I'll be talking about disappointing teams in the NHL. In this podcast, I talk about some of the most disappointing teams in the league so far this season. Columbus Blue Jackets. The Columbus Blue Jackets came into this season with high expectations after signing Johnny Goudreau in free agency and with the crop of emerging young players like Cole Sillinger and Ken Johnson. Unfortunately, the season has been an utter disaster for the team as they sit in last place in the Metropolitan Division while only Chicago and Anaheim have worse records than them. One major reason for their struggles has been goaltending. Elvis Merzlikens has struggled this season, posting a 2-5 record with a 4.7 for GAA and 0.864 save percentage in 8 starts, while Jonas Corposalo has a 3-4-1 record with a 3.75 GAA and 0.899 save percentage in 7 starts. Daniil Tarasov has a 2-3-1 record with a 3.17 GAA and 0.912 save percentage. The defense as a whole has struggled, and to make things worse, they lost Zach Wierenski, their number one defenseman, for the rest of the season due to injury. It will be tough sledding for the Blue Jackets to play without Wierenski, as they don't have anyone on the current roster that can make up for his offensive production. Johnny Goudreau has certainly held up on his end of the deal, as he has 22 points in 21 games, but no other player on the team has more than 20 points. Only 4 other players on the team have more than 10 points. Columbus has the 6th least goals for in the league, while giving up the 3rd most goals against in the league. No other team in the league ranks bottom 6 in both categories. Columbus has been hampered by a bunch of long-term injuries to key players such as Zakarensky, Patrick Laine, Jacob Voracek, Adam Boquist, Justin Danforth, and Nick Blankenberg. Patrick Laine once again has been a big disappointment this year as he has missed extended time this season twice already. He was expected to be a big part of the offense this season, but due to injuries, he hasn't really gotten going. Kent Johnson has played very well this season actually. He has 11 points in 18 games and has been one of the better players on the team. But Cole Sillinger has a sophomore slump, having only put up 5 points in 21 games. The Columbus Blue Jackets are in for a long season with the injuries they have and being without their number one defenseman for the rest of the season. They might be looking towards getting a lottery pick than making the playoffs. And now a word from our sponsor. Check out my scouting blog at HockeyWiz777Scouting.com. Listen to my scouting blog podcast on anchor.fm backslash HockeyWiz777Scouting. Ottawa Senators. The Ottawa Senators currently sit in last place in the Atlantic Division. Only Columbus, Chicago, and Anaheim have worse records than Ottawa. Ottawa can score, but the issue is that they give up more goals than they score. The Sens have 66 goals for to 71 goals against this season. Ottawa's struggles this season is due in large part to the Josh Norris injury. Ottawa's scoring is pretty top-heavy, so thus they don't get much production from their bottom six. Brady Kuchuk, Tim Stutzel, and Claude Giroux are the top scorers for the team, with each notching over 20 points. Alex DeBrinket, who was acquired in an off-season trade, has 17 points, while Drake Batherson has 16. The defense, who was supposed to take a jump forward this season with the addition of Jake Sanderson, hasn't played well at all, due in large part to Thomas Shabbat's slow start, who only has 9 points in 16 games. Jake Sanderson is actually the leading scorer amongst defensemen right now for the Senators, with 11 points in 21 games. Goaltending has been a big issue as long as Ottawa continues to ride Anton Forsberg, who for some reason is DJ Smith's preferred goalie. Forsberg has a 4-7-1 record with a 3.4 with a 3.43 GAA and 0.904 save percentage in 12 starts, while Cam Talbot has a 3 and 5 record with a 2.51 GAA and 0.919 save percentage in 8 starts. It always seems to be the same story. It always seems to be the same story with the Ottawa Senators. They have really good hype heading into the season, but for some reason, they more often than not disappointed fans in the last decade. If the Ottawa Senators continue to play like they have at the beginning of the season, they will be competing for a lottery pick rather than a wild card spot. Check out my hockey blog at hockeywistalkshockey.blogspot.com. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at hockeywist777. Nashville Predators. The Nashville Predators came into the season with playoff aspirations, but they haven't had a good start to the season with a 9-9-2 record and a 3-6-0 record on the road. Nashville has struggled to score this season as they have the third least goals for in the league. Only Philly and Chicago have scored less in the league, and most surprising of all, their goaltending hasn't been that great either. The Predators take pride in the fact that they are able to roll four lines, but now instead of having an impactful top 
top six. They have four lines that don't really do much of anything besides win faceoffs and throw a bunch of hits. As much as I like Tanner Janot and Colton Sissons, they do not belong on the second line with Matthew Shane. They simply aren't productive enough offensively to warrant playing time with Duchesne. And if you want that line to be a shutdown line, Duchesne isn't good enough defensively, so that combination doesn't work. Who is having a hot stretch right now is playing on the first line with Philip Forsberg and Mikel Granlund. Although he is although he is putting up points, both he and Granlund struggle in the faceoff circle, which gives the other team top lines an extreme advantage in terms of puck possession. Ryan Johansson and Eno Niederreiter were bumped to the third line to play with Cole Smith. This combination doesn't make sense either. The most surprising thing about the Predators start to this season is that their defense has struggled to produce outside of Roman Yossi. Ryan McDonough and Matthias Ekholm have been okay but they haven't really been their normal selves. Yossi Saros is not getting enough help in front of him and is often left out to dry which has resulted in a 7-6 2 record, a 3.06 GAA, and 0.905 save percentage. There is still a lot of time left to turn around the season, but if they do not start scoring more goals, it will be tough for Nashville to make the playoffs. Listen to Hockey Wiz Talks podcast on Podbean and Spotify. Check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com backslash at hockeywiz777. Vancouver Canucks. The Vancouver Canucks were a team that had playoff aspirations heading into the season, and there were certainly a lot of expectations for this team. The Canucks have not lived up to them as they currently sit in third place as they currently sit in third to last in the Pacific, but only because San Jose and Anaheim are in the same division. Vancouver has the sixth most goals for in the league, yet have allowed the fourth most goals against in the league, scoring 79 goals and allowing 83 goals against. The only teams that have allowed more goals against than Vancouver are Columbus, San Jose, and Anaheim. Vancouver already has five players that have over 20 points. Elias Pettersson, Bo Horvat, JT Miller, Andre Kuzmenko, and Quinn Hughes. Unfortunately, this is overshadowed by their terrible defensive woes and goaltending. And terrible goaltending. Despite what the stat sheet might indicate, both Oliver ekman Larson and Tyler Myers have not been that great defensively. And their D-zone turnovers have led to goals. Their forwards often do not give much effort on back checks, which will leave opponents a lot of time to operate in the offensive zone. Thatcher Demko has been flat out horrible this uh, Thatcher Demko has been flat out horrible this season. He has a 3-9 and 2 record with a 3.81 GAA and 0.885 save percentage in 14 starts, being outplayed by Spencer Martin, who has a 6-2 and 1 record with a 3.23 GAA and 0.902 save percentage in 9 starts. The difference in record when Martin is in goal versus when Demko is in goal leaves a lot of questions. Is Demko the cause of the struggles or does the defense play better in front of Spencer Martin? If so, why don't they play like they do defensively in front of Martin in front of Demko? The Vancouver Canucks were actually in a similar situation last year in the early portions of the season and eventually turned it around in the second half. So if you are a Canucks fan, there is definitely some hope that the Canucks can turn it around this season. In my next podcast, I'll be talking about the Calder Trophy race.